Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. On my last video, I did some pressure pulse testing on a radiator and a coolant system. And from that video, I got a couple of uh, requests to show my setup. But I want to take it a step further and show you how to set it up on any vehicle. Permitting that you have a couple of things that you should probably already have. One of them being a universal funnel kit. I'm going to set you guys up here because it might be a little difficult to um, do everything with the camera on. Um, we're gonna use one of these funnel kits. Uh, the pressure pulse sensor, whether you're using the Pico in the zoom feature, but I'm using this pressure pulse sensor for demonstration purposes. This adapter here comes with the Mighty Vac uh, kit. Comes with a bunch of um, fittings all in one little little bag you know most people sell them as is so you got the right adapter for your car and you'll be able to do this on any car really so you just you remove your original radiator cap put in your adapter and since this adapter here isn't big enough for just that hole there I put the funnel on first and then I'll put on my uh, sensor to that and then obviously connect my uh, <clears throat> my sensor up so let me just go ahead and do that for you guys and <clears throat> it's basically a BNC to BNC cable pretty straightforward now usually there'll be a lot of vibrations that can affect the signal so basically I use this little bungee cord to keep the sensor up pretty straightforward keep it away from vibration um, I usually keep my Pico scope already set up for 12 volt capture you know so right from the get go as soon as I start up my Pico it's already at a 20 volt scale two seconds per division now I could just do it like that alone but since we're gonna do the whole video like if I was doing my whole setup over there I'm gonna also connect my amp clamp so I'm gonna want to set up my channel my second channel for the amp clamp but first let me run this cable over there I'm basically getting my second channel and connecting it to the to the amp clamp and putting it around the battery uh, negative since it's the easiest to get to right now and on this one it shows a positive it shows a positive here but you that change that for a negative that's the way it's gonna uh, capture it correctly so change this, put this positive, and then we're going to do an ignition coil uh, sink, and these are coil wires that I can sync to, so it's a secondary probe right here. No, it's not as fast as a block test, but we're not doing a block test. <laughs> I know I'm going to get it for that. Oh, could you do a block test a lot faster? Yes, you could. But that has its pros and cons. If you have a scope, if you have the time, you can do this. Now, I'm, not, I'm just going to sync to any. Usually, you'll, you'll look for number one, but really for purpose of the video I'm just gonna connect it up here and we're gonna go into the Pico channel B is my current clamp 600 amps we'll put it at 500 amps channel C is my um, my secondary probe I usually always put it on inverted and it works just fine. 
I'll put it at uh, I'll put it at 20 kV. And I like to capture a bunch of time on here. So, and lucky for me, this Yukon here, <clears throat> I could just press the the pedal, and it'll kill the injectors. But other cars, you may have to remove an injector fuse, like I did on that other video. So. Let's go see what our capture looks like. Here's our capture. I like to clean this up a bit with some filtering. Obviously you're going to need more of an RC capture but you can see that on this one you have pretty much zero pulse so you could you could do that all that you want you have basically no pulse in there so cooling systems fine this is a known good vehicle I forgot to mention I should have started with that um, the other vehicle from the last video that was a no-go for those of you who wanted to know but this is pretty much a, a real-time setup video no it's not two seconds long but is not that long either i mean you're doing a quick diagnosis if you're flat rate yes you might want to do a black block test but what if it's a warranty vehicle all you know is that there's a presence of hydrocarbons if somebody sprayed fuel or oil around you um some people suggested a sniffer i told them that you know that's gonna that's gonna give you false positives a block test on the other hand it's not 100 percent. it's it i've heard of people getting burned i've never been burned by it myself but I've heard of people getting burned by block tests and, um, and, and and things of that nature. But the purpose of this video is just to show the setup on how to do this quick test. It, it's really not that much time. Take it for what it is. Uh, you guys can count the, uh, the time and uh, decide for yourself. But for those of you who asked, thanks for asking. And <clears throat> I hope this video was useful to you. Appreciate your time. And until next time.